Hey there, my name is Paul and this is Out of Neutral, a weekly tune-up where we look to the Bible to get in gear and follow Jesus into the life he came to make possible. Today I want to talk about coincidences and the sovereignty of God. A while back, a visitor came to our church for the first time. After coming to faith, he had become more and more uncomfortable with his church's teaching that you can lose your salvation if you don't keep up morally or spiritually. He didn't know anyone from our church, but had visited after finding our church website. That morning, I taught on the security of a believer from Ephesians 1, verses 11 to 14. It's a great passage that explains how God seals and guarantees the salvation that he offers. It had been many months since I had taught anything on this theme. What are the chances that he would just randomly walk into our service on the day I was teaching on the very topic he had been struggling with? And yet, this very thing happens again and again. Now, according to a survey published by LifeWay Research, 60% of people believe that God knows everything but doesn't necessarily determine it. Another 11% were unsure. In the case of this newcomer, they felt that God was aware of the amazing coincidence that he experienced ahead of time, but he wasn't responsible for it. While that sentiment feels attractive, the Bible paints a very different picture of God. You may be surprised to learn the extent of God's rule taught in the scriptures. Isaiah 46, 9 to 10 says that God declares the end from the beginning. He doesn't just say that he knows it. In fact, not only does God uh, order a man's steps, according to Proverbs 20, 24, and turn a king's heart wherever he will, according to Proverbs 21, 1, he even has authority over animals. When Jesus said, are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. He was not only offering assurance of God's tender care and concern, but showing that God's rule extends to tiny, seemingly insignificant things. In Proverbs 16, 33, the Bible teaches that even the lot, the very symbol of randomness, is determined by God. Now, I think that there are two reasons that people want to explain away God's sovereignty over and, and his authority over all things, and choose instead to believe in coincidence. The first reason that I think we try to limit God's sovereignty is that we don't like to think of him being involved in the evil and tragedy of the world. But the Bible is very clear on this. Asking, for instance, in Amos 3.6, does disaster come to a city unless the Lord has done it? Or quoting God in Isaiah 45.7 saying, I make well-being and create calamity, I am the Lord who does all these things. Job 1.12 teaches that even Satan is on God's leash and can't move a step beyond that which God permits. But to say that God controls the evil of the world is not to say that he's responsible for it. It was humans that spoiled paradise and chose a world of sin and evil. God has the reality of some sin, sickness, and dying to work with because of the fall. But even here, Romans 8, 28 and 29 reminds us that God uses the evil we brought upon ourselves for his good purposes. It can be a great comfort to a Christian to know that God limits the extent and controls the impact of even the tsunamis of life. There is no purely random disaster. The second reason that we try to limit God's sovereignty is that if God determines all that the Bible says he does, it would seem to follow that we're off the hook. We don't even have to say that the devil made me do it anymore. We can say God made me do it. But this misunderstands what the scriptures teach. James 1.13 teaches that no one should say, I am being tempted by God because he himself tempts no one. When you sin, it's not God's fault. We're responsible for what we do, and so we'll have to each give an account of ourselves to God. But even when we commit sin for which we're held responsible, God guides the circumstances and the extent of it to accomplish his good and wonderful purposes. So in Genesis 50, 20, Joseph could look back on the jealous actions of his brothers in selling them into slavery and declare, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring about that that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Where all of these things can be most clearly seen is at the cross, a terrible act of injustice planned by Satan 
brought to pass by wicked men, and yet all under the clear purpose and plan of God who brought salvation and blessing through it. In this life, we may not see God's purpose in all of the trials and injustices we face, but we can trust that God has a good and perfect plan. Many people struggle to understand the tension between God's sovereignty and our responsibility. Where do the Bible's teachings in this area encourage you? If you've experienced the practical impact of this doctrine, share it in the comments so we can all be encouraged. That's all for this time. Today's video has helped you get out of neutral. Leave a comment, share it with your friends, and subscribe to join us on the journey.